come to this woodland today partly to share some of my limited knowledge on woodlands and um, partly to pick up some straw for winter mulch. The farmer here has very kindly given me access to his field to pick up straw that wasn't uh, baled. Incidentally, straw is very good for mulching trees or any pots that you have to keep away any winter frosts. So I'm not really a fan of this woodland for its management. You can see the land surface here is not really well used. In fact, this wood hasn't really been managed since it was planted. I've been visiting this woodland now for almost a decade and I never really liked it but really I'm a big proponent of going to places that you don't particularly like and and doing things you don't like because you find out stuff and for me over the past decade I've watched this woodland arguably deteriorate from a forester's perspective but I can see that there is some hope, there is some improvement. It's not necessarily an improvement from a, from a forester's perspective, but certainly for ecology and um, nature, I can see that the ecology here is definitely improving, but the surface area of land you can see, there's big gaps here with no timber and any timber that is produced is arguably quite poor quality. So what happens when woodland degenerates like this? Because this is a non-natural woodland, this is actually a spruce investment. And what happens is from the inside, because the planting is so dense, it's unnatural arguably, it needs to be managed by humans. And if it's not managed, it naturally thins itself out and the internal sections of the wood become very thin. This is basically because trees are starved for light on the inside. So if you have a woodland or if you're looking at places to buy or if you're renting or whatever, or if you're a farmer. If you have this woodland, then really you're very lucky. And you also have a duty of care to look after that woodland because it's not natural. It needs your help because humans planted it in the first place. You see, natural regeneration is very sparse and humans plant trees very densely at the start of the crop and then it requires thinning out as the crop goes through certain stages. And with a crop like this, Sitka, it really needs thinning after about five years and then every five years it needs to be reappraised. Otherwise, this kind of thing happens. What you can look for, incidentally, if you do have a woodland, is vertical lines. If you're inside a woodland and you see a lot of vertical lines, it's a good sign. If you see quite a few horizontal lines, then it's not so good. And you can see here the surface area of land that's used to produce this timber is quite a lot of land use and not so much quality timber. So what happens through the stages of, of a life cycle of a woodland? I mean, for the fast growing species, normally after about five or 10 years, they will need to be thinned. And what does that actually mean? Well, what you can do is you go to each tree and you measure the diameter breast height, the DBH. Any small diameter trees 
you remove them and you set a diameter across each section of the woodland and you just remove these thin these thin trees because these small trees will be taking light and soil resources from the larger trees so by removing them at an early stage you stop this internal thinning that happens in uh, woodlands in unnatural woodlands so you give more resources to the larger trees and you can get higher quality timber that way and also you prevent all of this mess arguably I said earlier that I didn't really like this woodland for its management because really it hasn't really been managed but over the years coming here I've seen a lot of changes and changes that from a forestry perspective are not that good but from a perspective of nature and ecology they're very good indeed and it just goes to show even if we do tamper with nature it just regenerates itself this is uh, there are several badger sets here just awesome these guys have moved in and they've been here years now but when it was planted there was nothing here and it was very dark I can imagine once these trees grew up within 10 years or so it would have been very very dark in here it's starting to open up now and that's another thing you can select individual large trees when you're doing your thinning depending on the crown and things like this and the canopy cover to open up areas in the woodland and this encourages biodiversity now the there are lots of uh, species that you can use as indicators so if you want to see for example if you have a lot of grazing inside a woodland if you have deer or issues like that because they are issues they cause a lot of damage and they prevent regeneration but if you want to see if you have a lot or not and and you can't see them in the day or you can't go to the woodland at night sunset like this then you can look for signs of them but also you can look at these indicator species and um, they're indicator species for forestry and not necessarily biology um, so plant species like holly for example if you have a bit of holly in your woodland it's an indication that you don't have many browsers because holly will be pulled out of the woodland very very early on and it won't get chance to get to um, the height threshold required so that it can grow basically there's also another one which is bracken if you have a lot of bracken that's a bad species to have as well and it's an indication that you maybe need to do something to try and control that bracken why would you want to do that well from a conservation perspective it's quite important to keep the the forest floor quite clear so to speak and what bracken does is it basically suffocates the forest floor so natural regeneration can't take place so what is natural regeneration and, and why would somebody in a woodland be interested in it why not just plant more trees and cut other trees down well you can do that but by allowing natural regeneration what you do is you select for tree species that are very hardy and tree species that can survive in that in in, in the environment that you have in your particular location so to encourage natural regeneration you basically need to have a clear forest floor and stuff like this is not very clear it's very good for insects and things but plant species it's quite dark so when you're looking in woodland um, 
it's a good idea to look for a tiered system in the woodland and by that I mean you want different levels in the canopy because this increases biodiversity and you'll get a lot more of a species rich environment that way natural regeneration needs to really take place every 50 or 60 years in any woodland it doesn't matter if it's a species like this a very fast species like spruce or some of the broadleaf woodlands which are very slow and very uh, awesome woodlands so if you let the woodland naturally regenerate and by regeneration I mean seeds that drop from the outside of the woodland birds drop them sometimes they blow in um, there's lots of ways for seeds to be transferred in inside a woodland or if the seed bank in the soil itself is quite rich as soon as some uh, pocket of the canopy is opened up then uh, you will get regeneration underneath so these you can see small seedlings coming through and take a look at these seedlings watch them and see what happens because if they don't grow you can look at them a bit closer and you can see what might be stopping them from growing because browsers grazers will come in and nip off the buds and sometimes it's quite difficult to see that those buds are gone and you think why are these trees not regenerating so it's a good idea and if you don't have any saplings or seedlings that's another indication that you have a lot of browsers and they are impeding regeneration this is not necessarily a bad thing but every 50 or 60 years in a woodland it should be allowed to regenerate so you should either start controlling grazers or look at stock proofing um, a woodland to a certain extent back when I when I studied a bit of conservation um, there was lots of laws I presume they're still still here uh, there's a, the Nature Conservancy Council was one of the big uh, institutions that we covered and this you've got to remember as well that conservation is not necessarily about optimizing the ecology for the ecology's sake it's more about allowing humans to extract resources and maintaining the ecology it's heavily tied in with sustainability and sustainability basically means keeping stuff for future generations and um, allowing things to continue kind of sustaining an ecosystem it's it's almost holding back an ecosystem and if you're interested have a look at succession biological succession and, and how it really works because trees are very very late in the successive process and if we plant them somewhere then we're arguably aging the the ecosystems so we need to be careful and we also need to manage these these trees otherwise stuff starts to happen that's not very good so you can see here horizontal and diagonal lines and the trees that are still standing that are not standing dead are basically inferior quality another thing that should be done with uh, trees every so often is brashing so removing these branches they die off with some species some species naturally prune themselves like larch for example and, and even spruce but larch is very good and the same with pine very good for planting on the external uh, parts of a woodland because then you can see through into the woodland and it gives you a beautiful view inside 
but something that should be done is brashing and this is a classic case of 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 a tree that hasn't been properly brashed so this timber is will have a knot in it now here and that could have grown um, and had a, a thicker double top there's lots of things here inside this crotch here it's open to infestation with disease the branch bark ridge is uh, constantly moving and, and injuring itself so that should have been cut off and then the tree would be straight and true and probably more healthy than it is now now I'm pretty much in the center of this woodland now you can see the Sun over there and open areas there so I'm a little bit towards this edge actually but in any case the trees in here have been wind thrown even though they're arguably sheltered by the other trees on the outside they've been wind thrown now wind throw is pretty much inevitable if you have soft soil and a tree with um, a less resistant root system a less robust root system with regard to wind but it can be pre pre prevented by proper thinning because the wind will, will scoop up from the uh, from the top of the trees it will scoop down in and remove unhealthy or dying trees and the roots don't stay anchored if they're not growing so eventually the roots start to rot away and then the tree falls so looking at woodland and seeing how things work inside it is a very good idea and i'd recommend getting a forester and spending some time with that forester I've looked at several places myself with various different types of woodland and spoken to foresters and read their reports. They're very interesting indeed because woodlands, pretty much all woodland is planted now and during that planting somebody had a plan, somebody designed a woodland so if you can pick up on those design pieces then you'll have an idea of how to develop that woodland, how to maintain that woodland and, you know, make something great out of it. And ecosystems are great because they always change and there's always things that you can look for and there's always things that you can change yourself and see what happens. It's not like a, a building or a car where things just deteriorate in a linear fashion with ecosystems they kind of develop they even grow themselves but that doesn't mean that they should be left because one of the worst things you can do in a woodland is just leave it It's a good idea to look at the woodland edge as well <coughs> because woodlands will naturally regenerate outside of the original planting if you let them and these woodland edges are quite important because there's a transition zone that allows certain species to exist species that wouldn't exist inside the woodland can exist on the transition zone and some quite rare species that are somewhat endangered uh, insect species butterflies and things like that exist in these transition areas where we go from farmland to woodland this is a woodland drain here and it was obviously put in because this is on an acclivity a slope of some sort because I think the original reason for this planting was because nothing else can be done with this land and that's unfortunate 
because woodland is generally used if nothing else can be done. But it is ultimately profitable and it's one of the best investments that you can make woodland anyway. This is a woodland drain. So this drain is still still operational as far as I know. But one lesson that I've learned from this place is the reason why woodland drains are cleared because if they're not cleared then they just clear themselves you can see the trees up there just about the lights beginning to fade but the trees up there have just cleared that drain they've died off and now they're uh, falling down so keeping these drains clear is is good but water inside a woodland is also very good if you can get a body of water inside it's like a natural clearing and it will manage that clearing itself instead of you having to clear all the trees and, and make sure they're clear to open up these areas. Now in these clearings there's a different microclimate so throughout a woodland there's different microclimates and this variation in microclimate leads to a variation in species so you get a higher species number and having a body of water means that you've got a place for species that are adapted to living in transition zones like dragonflies and things like this. The dragonfly incidentally is a biological indicator species. Um, also I forgot to mention earlier on if, you, if you've got a lot of birch in your woodland birch is not very tasty so grazers will not eat the birch. It's also uh, a relatively ruderal species, a, um, a pioneer species, so it will take over places first in biological succession from a tree perspective. So species like grasses start off, they can survive in sand and things like that, and it progresses on from grasses to larger plant species. They enrich the sand and make it into soil by adding organic matter over time and eventually all plants are succeeded by trees. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. If you're thinking about grazing sheep in your woodland, six sheep to every two acres apparently, or one large cow.